if we all master the art of forgiveness, no one will feel like they're being scammed in a marriage. The problem is we don't apologize the right way. Just listen to what I'm saying. Yeah? For you to be forgiven, you have to recount in depth what the other person has to forgive. I've already apologized. Okay, so I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You have to say why you're sorry, why the other person should forgive you. You understand? And whatever it is, you messed up. How many times have you messed up? And how many times have you apologized? Okay, it may not make a lot of sense right now, but I'm going to share. Today, this whole topic about forgiveness is about one case study. One case study which I'm about to share at the beginning of my work. And this is one of the reasons I decided to be a mediator in marriages. Especially after meeting this couple. And they were a young couple. After meeting this couple, and they still want to stick together. But I thought they were sticking together for convenience. They were done with each other. They are sticking together for convenience. Why I think they were done with each other? I have never, I know prayers work, but I've never had at any given time up to today where somebody kneels down to pray for the death of a child and their husband to happen at the same time. I know I'm not making any sense. I'm going to explain to you deeper. My name is Getu Mugai. I'm a lifestyle designer on sex and relationship. And this is marriage is a scam with a cherry on top. Today, these two people, yes, they were scamming each other. They were scamming each other. I don't even know at what time, at what point in their marriage they decided to hurt each other to this point. And the shocker is no one was willing to give up the marriage. They were sticking around. To me, it was to conve uh, for convenience. For them, when I talk to the lady, to the guy, familiarity. You know? And the lady, she couldn't handle the children and the bills by herself. So they decided they will go on. Let me explain to you what happened. Then I'll give you the cherry on top. Yeah, and if this marriage can survive, yours can too. I really don't know what you're going through. I have no idea, but I can tell you, we never make a mistake, especially come and know your queen. If it's true marriage, I'm not talking about can we stay, and you know me. To me, can we stay is not a marriage. If it's good enough to sleep, crash, and shag, he's good enough to marry. You know, and if it's not, why are you wasting your time? Both you and him, why are you wasting your time? So I'm talking about a marriage where the two of them went to church they got married you understand what i'm saying the pastor blessed the union in front of all those hundreds of witnesses family members so as usual i met this couple they came to me because i'm a sex part they came because sex was not working and of course, if you come to me and sex is not working, you know, there are always issues. Especially when I check and Miss Victoria has never left town, Mr. Victor has never left town, and it's still not working, there's always an issue. So what I normally do in my, in my mediation, we have four sessions, standard four sessions. If you have a sixth, and there's some we've even had eight sessions by individual session. But these four sessions, the first session is the two of, the three of us. And then the second and the third, me either or either the third with the guy, the fourth with the lady, it doesn't matter. I normally pick the next person who is the most quiet, didn't share much. That's the person who gets the second session, then the third session, and then the fourth session we close together. So, when I met the woman, the, the, the lady is the first one who came for the first session. 
sitting down with her uh, she was telling me the way she can't she can't have sex with the husband because the husband had an affair and that affair resulted into a child and then she's taking care of the child the child had to be brought to her to her matrimonial home for her to take care of that and i was thought why why would you want to do that she told me because the mother died during childbirth and this guy would not let the child go you know and she also didn't have a very stable family and by that particular time she didn't even know who her family was they had an affair and not just a kawaida mpango kando alikuwa akona nyumba ndogo nyumba ndogo means eh, he was keeping this lady taking care of all her, all her bills even the neighbors there knew she was he was the husband so of course during after that she he had to take the child the lady knew about this lady the wife knew about this lady so um took care of the child the youngest of the family uh, explained to the other children that this is your sibling and um new member of the family and they continued and they did a very good job covering the whole thing with the children okay at some point their parents knew what was going on but they decided because it's between the two of us we will do this now let me tell you why sex was not working this woman after this she could not have sex with her husband because he's to her not only did he have an affair he lived with this woman and he was not using a condom that's why there was the child and then she also questioned this woman's character apparently the man was not the only one you know he was not the only one i told you she, the wife knew about the pangwakando knew about the nyumba yandogo you know they would fight once in a while but the husband continued with this other woman and i asked her, you knew you, your husband had an affair has another woman and uh, you accepted so why do you have a problem now and that's why she brought this thing off she had questionable behaviors she had other men yeah to my horror and surprised this lady had stopped having penetrative sex or intercourse with the husband okay so she was giving the husband the thigh i didn't even know that people did that i know to give a hand job a blow job and so many other jobs but a thigh job this was the first time i'm hearing about this so and before she started giving the husband the thigh they had had a sexless marriage for a very long time this lady would have sex with the husband when she wants to have babies the minute she conceives the whole of her pregnancy she wouldn't want to have sex you know and even after that and that's why she was okay with that new mayandogo as in she's being she even said he's being serviced by somebody else let's just say these guys had made a mess of this marriage yeah so the guy when it was okay now by the time they were coming to me they wanted to start to start having sex you know they had gone through whatever it is they'd gone through you know and uh, they decided they're sticking it out so how do they go back to revive their marriage but there's still so much hatred in this lady and if you think the lady was hurt you wait until i tell you about the man when it was his turn very few times i have a man who comes to my office sit down with me stranger and uh breakdown very few times and no he did not have feminine energy because you know i talked about this this was a man he was man man enough you know if he convinced this woman to take care of the child from nyumba yandogo this is not a wimp this is a man who knew his rights it's only that he doesn't shout he doesn't scream and he doesn't like to cause chaos and that's why he decided to live this double life but was it really double life the wife knew about it the wife knew about it so this man came to me and he was mourning the lady who died the mother of his child from the new and Ogo. he was mourning his marriage and he feared for his child yeah and he told me 
he's never met such a heartless woman. He would beg and beg and beg for sex. He would beg. And when she agrees, that's when he's lucky to get the thigh. You understand? So he didn't see why he should let go of the new Bayadogo. At first, this lady was serving him sexually. That's all she was. You understand? But he was so tender, quite the opposite of the wife. Decided to keep her. So they had an understanding. Even that lady from Nyumbayandogo knew he has a wife. He's not going to divorce the wife. He's never ever going to marry her. You know? And when they got pregnant, they discussed it. And they decided they're keeping the child. They're keeping the pregnancy. Towards the end, that's when the wife came to know that the lady from the Nyumbayandogo is pregnant because they had made a deal that is not going to have a child with this other woman. But things happened. You know, so she was in the loop. Maybe not in, with everything, but she knew what was going on. So, during childbirth, that's when the lady from Nyumbayandogo died. How sad. How ironic. Some people say how convenient. You know, but death is a death nevertheless. So from hospital, they lay the guy just picked the child and brought the child home. And they continue. They say it. I would beg and beg and beg. You know, months on end, he's not having sex with me. And this other one was taking care of those needs. So I think it was a shocker to both of them that this silly game they were playing in this marriage, not wanting to divorce, caught up with them. And that's why everybody was taking responsibility. And that's why they came to me. And they said, I have this thing make couples to press the restart button. Restart button means you have said what you need to say. Everything is on the table and you've left it behind. The healing journey starts. Yeah? So... Part of the healing journey is forgiveness. Now, this forgiveness, like I said at the beginning, is very tricky. Okay? Now, to get to the bottom of who is forgiving who, I don't know, I would ask you, who deserves forgiveness here? Is it the lady, the wife, who has agreed to take care of the child from the Mpango Akando or Nyumandogo? Or is it the man who was pushed into the other arms, uh, the, the other woman's arm, because they has the wife will not give her sex? Yeah. Now, a lot of things happened in this marriage. I'm just telling you from, you know, because our topic today is forgiveness. A lot of harm had been done. A lot of damage in this particular marriage. Okay. The lady agreed. To take care of the child. Yeah. And she honored to me and she told me this guy is worth dead to me than alive. If he dies, I get all the benefits. I get everything. Yeah. And I don't just want him to die. I want him to die together with his other child. Because if he dies alone. Now, you should have seen the look on her face if she had powers. At some point, I was even afraid and is a poison or something like that. She really wanted this guy to die. She would pray to God to take him away. And not just him plus the child. Seriously. If you're done with someone, if you're done with them, why don't you just let them go? For it to come to this extent. Seriously. This is when so many people agree. That marriage is a scam. These two were scamming each other. Everybody was scamming. Even this guy. You, you don't have to put up with that kind of a woman. There are some people are not made for marriage. Marriage is not for everyone people. And definitely this lady. Is not meant for marriage. And get a footer too. I'm against accessorizing with children and get a footer to mwanamume and patie watoto and lipie bills from afar. 
than getting this man who believed in marriage and want to be taken care of, or want to take care of his family. Mess him up to this extent. This guy did not have to stay. Why do you stay with such kind of woman? You're not even worth her Miss Victoria. The only benefit, major, that you can't share with anybody else other than your wife. The major gift you're supposed to enjoy in your marriage. You don't get it. You know? Then I take, ask myself, when did this happen? When did this happen? Apparently, this was not the first woman he's had. There's been several women. It's only that this one was a little bit more permanent. So, like I said, the topic here is forgiveness. They needed to so forgive each other so they can move on. And the way forgiveness is supposed to happen in a marriage, you need to recount. So first, we had to start with the guy. And he actually volunteered. He said, I'm going to go first. Yeah, and I will honor up to why I was having an affair. And not just one. And he said, yes. And this is how forgiveness is supposed to be done. You recount. If you're being forgiven for what? what extent if there were women how many which ones does she know it's the only way this lady will move on okay so she said there were two others you know apparently there was even a maid in the mix the wife was shocked there was even one of those maids mentioned yours there was a maid i remember one time i was so sexually starved and she knew what was going on. She made herself available. Yeah, and it wasn't just one time. Many, many times until the girl fell in love with him. Then he's the one who actually made her get fired. Because he wasn't interested and he wanted the wife to know. Aka later complained, Zile Zaki Puzi Puzi, the wife agreed, fired the girl. And the girl went, did not cause problem. Lucky, he was very lucky. Usually girls don't just live quietly. You know, so the girl left, so counted the maid. Two other people, she didn't know, you know, and even said these ones to go to Nainda to a guest house, and we were doing our business, then they come home. And then this other one, you know, we used to work where? At the guest house. Guess what? Higher. Continued, had new bandogo, had the child, the lady didn't make it during childbirth, and here we are. And the reason why he would do that is because the wife would not make up sex with her. So the only reason why I slept with the other women is because you would not sleep with me. You know? So he said his truth and the lady, you know, and the lady, oh, it was her time. She said she was not interested from the beginning. She pinned it on, oh, uh, the way I was brought up as a Christian, this was this, this was that. But at the end of the day, she said she was not attracted to the man. She was not interested in a romantic relationship with this man. She just wanted to have children with this man. You know, she couldn't imagine her life without kids. So she wanted to have children and she didn't want to just sleep with any other person. And strange enough, this lady has never cheated. I believed her because the kind of things she honored up. You know, she had never stepped out of a marriage. She didn't want to have sex. She was done with sex. The only time she would have sex is when she wanted to have kids and she would have it. She has never enjoyed sex. She's never had a nini and orgasm. She doesn't even want to be, even when they were making babies, she's accepted and she's all lovey-dovey. She wants to have sex. She would open up positions, do whatever it is she needs to do and let it go so i needed her to honor up and confess to this guy that she actually prayed for him to die you should have seen the look on his face but because he knew he was so heartless you know he wouldn't put it behind her nani um you know past her so they talked uh, I think the only achievement I had is for them to open up and to go that deep 
so they can forgive each other. But the time they were living there, the forgiving process, the healing process had not begun. By the time they were leaving my office, after the fourth session, the healing process had not begun. In fact, it brought so many other things which had been buried into the surface. But at least they knew exactly what they were getting themselves into this second time round. And guess what? That marriage survived. I checked on my clients and I checked on them. They were not hurt. They were not very bitter. They were not in love. You know, they were not even, what can I say, but they were committed. That is what I respected about them. They were committed. So their marriage was more mechanical, more functioning, more practical. They were talking, you know, and the lady was having sex. So I gave them the recipe. They needed to schedule. They stuck to the schedule, whether they liked it or not, they stuck to the schedule. Well, let's just say I had a very good client for lubricants. Because it wasn't coming naturally, she was buying her lubricants and she was trying, she was passed by, you know, she would talk, she was not very chatty at some point, but they were together and they stayed together and they continued taking care of their two kids plus one. Marriage is not a scam, people. We decide to scam each other. And this is what I will tell you. If this, that marriage survived with those major issues, because those were major issues, if you ask me. Those, were major, those two had no business being married to each other in the first place. You know, the man was in love with marriage. That's why he stuck around. The lady did not. My name is Getu Bungai. I'm a lifestyle designer on sex and relationship. Today, I have talked to you as a mediator. I've talked to you as a marriage crusader. I don't know what you're going through. But torturing each other is not in, is not worth it. I don't believe in divorce, but if it gets there, maybe that's the best thing for you to do. Follow me on my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, threads, TikTok, and do not forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're going through something, give me a call. We'll buy call, we'll have coffee. Comment, 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 comment. Share, 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 share. Asante, Nisana.